It feels like all hell is breaking loose across the United States. From violent hurricane-force thunderstorms blasting the northern plains to a punishing heat dome smothering the South Mother Nature is throwing everything at us. Overnight, an exceptionally dangerous line of storms, potentially a derecho, is racing across the plains with destructive winds and torrential rain. At the same time, record-challenging heat is baking tens of millions, and forecasters warn this life-threatening heat wave will only expand in the coming days. In the west, parched landscapes remain on edge as drought drags on. This is a week of extremes, and we need to break it all down right now with an urgent update on what to expect. Please stay tuned. And if you find this information useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our weather community for daily updates. Forecasts of significant weather hazards across the U.S. from July 28 to August 1, 2025. Pink-shaded areas indicate hazardous heat alerts, while green-shaded areas highlight days with heavy rainfall and flood risk in different regions. Explosive plain storms, possible derecho unleashed tonight. The most imminent threat is unfolding right now in the northern plains. An outbreak of severe thunderstorms is charging eastward, and the Storm Prediction Center SPC has sounded the alarm with a rare moderate risk 4-5 outlook for parts of eastern South Dakota, southern Minnesota, and northern Iowa. This means forecasters anticipate a high-end event. In this case, an intense convective complex likely to evolve into a derecho, a long-lived windstorm. Indeed, a derecho is likely across portions of the northern plains, with numerous hurricane-force gusts over 75 mpm one per evening expected as the storms plow through. The atmosphere is primed. As we head through tonight, these storms will rapidly intensify and organize into a ferocious squall line. Winds up to 75-90 mph are not out of the question, powerful enough to down countless trees and power lines and cause structural damage. Embedded tornadoes are also possible, especially on the leading edge of bowing segments, and any discrete supercells ahead of the line could drop hail larger than golf balls. Blinding rain will accompany the onslaught, so flash flooding is another hazard. If you're in the watch areas, from the eastern Dakotas across Minnesota into Iowa, stay alert, keep your phone's emergency alerts on, and have a safety plan for high winds and tornadoes. This is an overnight event which makes it even more dangerous. Residents and visitors are urged to have multiple ways of receiving warnings like phone alerts, NOAA weather radio since you might be asleep when warnings are issued. Already this evening, we're seeing scattered severe storms erupting from Montana and the western Dakotas into Minnesota, and they will coalesce into a massive complex. Cities like Fargo, Sioux Falls, Minneapolis, perhaps as far east as Rochester, or even the western suburbs of Chicago by Tuesday morning, need to be ready for a high wind event. The National Weather Service explicitly warns that widespread damaging winds are likely, and numerous significant gusts over 75 mph could cause extensive damage in the path of this system. Travel will become hazardous. Imagine driving in 80 mph crosswinds and power outages are likely in the hardest hit zones. Take this seriously and shelter indoors away from windows when storms approach. We want everyone to get through this intense night safely. Flood threat spans the heartland. Rainfall on the rise. In the wake of the evening's severe storms, a new danger will persist flooding from excessive rainfall. The same frontal system sparking the plain storms is expected to stall out and slow down, wringing out torrential downpours over parts of the central U.S. into midweek. The Weather Prediction Center, WPC, is highlighting a broad area from the central high plains into the Missouri Valley, under risk for flash flooding. In fact, for Tuesday, July 29th, WPC has issued a slight risk level 2 plus 4 for excessive rainfall stretching from northeast Wyoming and southeast Montana through the plains into western Iowa. This means scattered flash floods are possible. By Wednesday, that flood risk shifts eastward and focuses on the Midwest, especially Iowa, northern Missouri, and central Illinois, as the decaying front and its moisture push into those areas. Repeated rounds of thunderstorms could dump 3 to 5 inches of rain in short order, overwhelming creeks, urban drainage, and low-lying spots. Communities along the Interstate 8090 corridor and Upper Mississippi Valley should be on guard for flash flooding, particularly Tuesday night into Wednesday. Never drive across flooded roads. As the saying goes, turn around, don't drown. There is also a flood watch in effect for some of these areas. Keep an eye on local NWS alerts. The ground in portions of the Midwest is already saturated from earlier summer storms, so it won't take much rain to create flooding problems. Rural areas could experience rapid rises on small streams, while cities might see street flooding during intense downpours. If you're in Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, or Missouri, be prepared for heavy rain and have a way to receive flash flood warnings through midweek. Meanwhile, monsoonal moisture is surging into the southwest, bringing beneficial rain and the risk of flash floods in the deserts. Parts of New Mexico and Colorado will see daily thunderstorms flaring up over the mountains and high deserts. With deeper moisture in place, some storms will produce very heavy rainfall rates, over an inch per hour, which can quickly inundate normally dry washes. WPC has also placed areas of the southwest under a slight risk of excessive rainfall, flash flood threat, including portions of New Mexico on Tuesday and edging into eastern Colorado by Wednesday. If you're camping or hiking in canyon country, stay vigilant. 
Dry creek beds can turn into torrents in minutes if a storm unleashes a downpour upstream. This pattern is fairly typical for late July monsoon season, but it's still dangerous. Never camp in arroyos or small canyons prone to flash floods. On the upside, the southwest desperately needs rain, and some of this moisture will bring relief to drought-parched areas more on drought in a moment. Blistering heat wave. Oppressive heat dome. Expands. While storms batter the plains, an equally perilous threat is broiling the central and eastern United States. Extreme heat. An enormous heat dome, essentially a sprawling high-pressure ridge, continues to park itself over the south and is forecast to strengthen and spread in the coming days. This dangerous heat wave has already engulfed areas from Texas and the Gulf Coast to the Carolinas and it's now pushing north and east. The National Weather Service reports that extreme heat is intensifying across much of the southeast and Tennessee Valley, with heat indices that feels like temperature factoring humidity soaring well into the triple digits. Many locations will see little if any overnight relief. Imagine waking up at dawn to 80 degrees from temperatures and swampy humidity around 90%, creating a cumulative stress on the body. Today, July 29th afternoon, Highs in the upper 90s DGF are expected to be commonplace from the Central Plains through the Mid-Atlantic, including major cities along the I-95 corridor from Washington, D.C., up through Philadelphia and New York. When combined with oppressive humidity, heat index values will reach 105, 115 degree one first in many areas. For instance, parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, and western Tennessee could feel as hot as 110, 115 degree one at peak heating. The NWS has heat advisories and excessive heat warnings plastered across a huge swath of the country. This is the kind of heat that is not just uncomfortable, it's dangerous. Heat illnesses can strike quickly in these conditions. Make sure to limit time outdoors, stay hydrated, check on vulnerable neighbors, the elderly, those without AC, outdoor workers, etc., and know the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. This heat wave is shattering records too. Dozens of daily high temperature records are predicted to fall especially in the southeast and even up into the northeast. Just yesterday, Tampa FL hit 100 degree for the first time on record after never officially reaching 100 degree since records began in the 1800s. A stunning milestone in this ongoing heat event, other cities from Jacksonville to Charlotte have tied or broken records as well. Nighttime low temperatures are also remarkably warm. Many spots are struggling to dip below the upper 70s or 80 degree oase at night. These record warm lows are especially concerning because the body has no chance to recover after the day's extreme heat. How long will the heat last? There is some relief in sight for the northern tier of states as a cold front presses down from Canada by midweek. By Wednesday and Thursday, July 30 31, slightly less humid air and more seasonal temperatures will filter into the upper Midwest and eventually the Northeast. For example, Chicago and Detroit might drop back into the 80s with lower humidity after Wednesday, a noticeable break. However, that front is likely to stall and fizzle out as it reaches the southern states. The Southeast and Deep South will remain in the furnace for the rest of the week. In fact, the heat dome is expected to recenter and possibly intensify again over the south-central U.S. by this coming weekend. Forecast models show the center of high pressure drifting toward the southern plains, Texas, or Oklahoma by early August, which means places like Dallas, Houston, New Orleans, and Memphis could stay above 95-100 degrees east each day into the weekend with heat indices still in the 110 degree William ballpark. Major heat risk levels, as defined by NOAA's experimental heat risk product, will persist for areas from the Gulf Coast to the lower Mississippi Valley and much of the southeast. It may finally be early next week when a more substantial pattern change offers relief to the South. Until then, we're looking at a prolonged period of heat danger. Heat safety. Call to action. If you're enjoying this video hopefully from an air-conditioned space, please smash that like button and share this update with friends and family in the affected areas. Let's help everyone stay aware. And drop us a comment about how it feels in your neck of the woods. We want to hear your heat or storm stories. Remember to subscribe for daily weather breakdowns so you never miss critical alerts. Your support means a lot as we work to keep our community safe. Tropical check-in. Quiet for now, but eyes on the Gulf. Amid all the chaos on land, let's quickly check the tropics. We're at the height of summer and the Atlantic hurricane season is starting to stir. But at this moment, there are no active tropical storms threatening the U.S. good news there. The National Hurricane Center, NHC, is not issuing any advisories on name systems and the seven-day outlook shows no cyclones expected to form imminently. However, NHC is monitoring a couple of features of interest. Firstly, a broad area of low pressure in the north-central Gulf of Mexico has been producing disorganized clusters of showers and thunderstorms over the water. This disturbance has drawn some attention because anytime you get a spin in the Gulf in late July, you watch it closely. The environment, however, is only marginally favorable for development. NAC gives the system a low chance around 10% of becoming a tropical depression in the next day or two before it likely moves inland along the Gulf Coast. In fact, by this coming weekend, the system is expected to drift west-northwest and come ashore probably in Texas or Louisiana, by which point any window for tropical development will shut. So a major tropical storm is not expected from this, 
That said, regardless of development, the disturbance will sling plenty of tropical moisture into the Gulf Coast states. Locally, heavy downpours are possible along parts of the Gulf Coast, from Louisiana to Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle, through the end of the week. Some areas could see 2 to 4 inches of rain with isolated higher totals which might cause flash flooding in flood-prone spots. So if you live in New Orleans Mobile or Pensacola, keep the rain gear handy and stay aware of any flood advisories. Luckily, wind and surge shouldn't be an issue with this weak system. It's mainly a rainmaker. Elsewhere in the tropics, a few tropical waves are marching westward across the Atlantic as is typical for late July. One tropical wave is now entering the eastern Caribbean, another is mid-Atlantic, but none show signs of immediate organization into a storm. Wind shear and dry air have been inhibiting these waves from spinning up. Long-range models hint that the first week of August could become more favorable for tropical development in the Atlantic Basin, so we'll keep monitoring closely. For now, it's a welcome break. The lower 48 gets to catch its breath on the tropical front while we deal with everything else. Of course, August and September are historically the busiest months for hurricanes, so don't let your guard down. Take this quiet period to review your hurricane plan if you live in a coastal area. We'll update you the moment there's any sign of trouble in the tropics. Looking ahead, drought persists out west, amid the deluge elsewhere. As we plan beyond this week's immediate hazards, one paradox of the current situation becomes clear. Some regions are drowning in water, while others are literally drying up. Even as flash floods soak parts of the central U.S., the western states remain locked in long-term drought. Large portions of the west, especially the Pacific Northwest Great Basin and northern Rockies, have seen below normal precipitation for months. In fact, drought has expanded and intensified across the Pacific Northwest and northern Intermountain West following a much drier than usual late spring and early summer. Brown withered hillsides and increasing wildfire risk continue to plague states like Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. The latest seasonal drought outlook from NOAA, valid through October, paints a grim picture for the West. Most of California, Nevada, and the Pacific Northwest are expected to continue in drought brown areas on the map, with some drought even developing or worsening in parts of the Northwest that have been drought free. Simply put, the Western drought is not over, and it could intensify without significant rainfall. The one bright spot out west is the Southwest monsoon. No AOA expects southeastern Arizona and southwestern New Mexico to see enough summer thunderstorm activity to improve drought conditions locally. Those areas of anticipated improvement show up in green on the outlook map. But for the vast majority of the West, the outlook is for drought to persist or even expand through late summer. Official NOAA U.S. Seasonal Drought Outlook, July 17th, OC31, showing predicted drought tendencies. Brown shades indicate areas where drought is expected to persist or worsen particularly across the West. Green areas show where drought improvement or removal is likely e.g. parts of the Midwest and Florida, thanks in part to recent and forecast rainfall. Interestingly, the heavy rainfall forecast over the next few days in the central U.S. will actually provide major relief in some drought-stricken pockets of the Midwest. Portions of the Corn Belt and Upper Midwest have been in moderate drought, but the soaking rains across Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, and neighboring states are expected to substantially improve soil moisture and ease drought conditions there. No AA's outlook indeed shows much of the Midwest in yellow-green meaning drought removal likely by the end of this valid period. Similarly, Florida's drought has almost completely been erased by plentiful summer thunderstorms. The rainy season brought a major decrease in drought coverage on the Florida peninsula, and drought is likely to be entirely gone there shortly. It's a tale of two countries' water woes from too much rain in the central, eastern states, and water woes from too little rain in the west. The hope is that as we transition into late summer and fall, the pattern might even out a bit. There are hints that El Nino conditions developing in the Pacific could bring a wetter winter to parts of the West. Historically, El Nino winters favor more California rain, for example, but that's months away and far from certain. For now, the immediate focus remains on staying safe during this onslaught of extreme weather. We have a potentially historic windstorm unfurling overnight, an ongoing severe flooding threat, and a massive heat wave only gradually abating for the North while continuing unabated in the South. It's a lot to take in, but being prepared and informed can make all the difference. We'll be here every step of the way to keep you updated on all these evolving threats. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss critical updates. We want you and your loved ones to stay safe and ahead of the storm. Stay vigilant out there. Heed all warnings from the National Weather Service. Look after each other in this extreme heat. Remember to check on seniors and those without AC. And don't take chances with severe storms or floods. This is an unusually volatile period of weather across our nation, but we'll get through it together. Drop a comment if you have questions or need specific info for your area. I'll do my best to help. Thank you for watching and stay safe, everyone. Let's hope by later this week, we'll be talking about commerce guys.